Hi, this is a short video about two simple and inexpensive additions to a Sureline long bed lathe. Nothing elaborate or innovative here, just a few cheap and easy additions that I found to be helpful and maybe some others will as well. The first speed change was adding a tachometer. Adding a tack to a Sureline or any similar tool was really simple. There are many of these kits available and this is a picture of one of them. Not necessarily recommended, it's just the one I used. It was about $18 and an Amazon source is linked in the description below. These things use a hull proximity sensor and a small magnet. To attach the magnet, I printed a collar in PLA for the spindle with a snug fit and a pocket to hold the magnet. I added a drop or two of glue to the pocket on the sleeve and inserted the magnet, being careful to get the polarity correct since it only works one way. The sleeve was then pressed onto the spindle and it's just held by friction. The wiring looks a little messy here, but it's actually very simple and can be soldered together quickly. To hold the tachometer, I printed a box with two cutouts for the display and a small on-off switch and powered it with a 9-volt battery. Both the Amazon listing and the device itself list the required voltage as 12 to 24 volts, but it turns on at just over 8 volts and the 9-volt battery works fine. I drilled a half-inch hole in a piece of aluminum to hold the uh, sensor and then added a couple of attachment holes and bent it to form a bracket and attached it to the back of the box. Then I adjusted the sensor and located it near the magnet. This shows the gadget in operation. It takes a few seconds to warm up and self-calibrate and then displays zero. The response after turning on the motor is a little slow as it apparently averages the readings constantly, so there's a little lag as it reaches the speed setting. And it's not easy to set an exact value, but an exact value is usually not needed anyway. Once a consistent RPM is displayed, it remains pretty constant thereafter. Works well. power feed is a little more involved, but it's still pretty simple. Sureline lays are quite small and don't include a power feed. They did offer an accessory power feed some years ago, but it had limited function and it's since been discontinued. My primary reason for wanting to add a power feed was to reduce the number of handwheel rotations needed to turn longer pieces. The carriage feed handwheel is 50 thousandths per revolution or 20 revolutions per inch. So a single pass on a 10 inch piece is 400 turns, 200 down and 200 back. With a multiple light depth of cuts that I normally use, that can be a lot of cranking and it gets tedious after a while. Of course a motorized feed can also help to produce a nicer finish as well. I decided to approach the tail end of the lathe rather than the usual addition at the headstock by simply adding a pulley on the end of the lathe screw in addition to the handwheel. This enables changing in just a few seconds from manual to power feed by adding or removing the belt with no permanent changes needed in the lathe itself. To add the pulley, I only needed an, uh, one additional part, an adapter to extend the length of the lead screw attachment shaft. For that, I turned a piece of brass and then drilled out the quarter inch hole to accept the end of the lead screw. Finally, the quarter inch diameter shaft was formed and it was parted at the correct length. I added a threaded hole for an M5 set screw and that was it.
The motor I used was a 12 volt 380 RPM Bring Smart worm gear. This was purchased on AliExpress and the link is given below. I wanted a relatively fast motor for quick return feeds and this is pretty fast for a worm gear motor. Of course with a brush motor any speed reductions will carry a price and reduce torque which I was concerned about even with a 2 to 1 pulley ratio. But that proved not to be a problem. At very slow speeds the torque is indeed low but normally I have the feed motor set up from 50 to 90 percent of maximum speed and at those settings it is more than enough torque for the softer materials such as aluminum, acetal and brass that I work with. 50% provides a linear advance of about 5 and 3 quarter inches per minute and 80% is about 10 inches per minute. For control I use this motor speed controller from eBay which is linked below. Again there are many available but I like this one partly because it includes an LED display of the PWM percentage which is handy to have and it only costs about 10 bucks. I also turned an adapter for the motor because the shaft is rather large and attached a timing pulley to it. This schematic shows the hookup of the device. The rocker switch controls the direction, left for forward, right for reverse, and the center position is off. And I added a toggle switch for continuous or pulse mode, where the drive operates only as long as the momentary push button is pressed, sort of like the jog button on a CNC controller. Speed is controlled with pulse width modulation using the pot. There were four parts that I printed a box to hold the controller and a corresponding lid with the appropriate cutouts, and a motor holder which slides along a groove on the supporting uh, tray and provides a means for applying tension to the belt. Printing the box was pretty straightforward. It was, after all, just a box. With a lid. This shows the controller wired up to the various controls in place. It's just some simple wiring and went together pretty quickly. And here's the final setup with the adapter mounted on the end of the uh, lead screw with a timing pulley mounted and then the hand wheel reattached at the end. The overall length was only increased by about two inches. Okay, finally time for some initial testing. Rocker switch to the left drives the carriage forward and to the right reverses the direction. The toggle switch is normally off, but when flipped to the left the system is under pulse control and the motor will run only as long as the momentary button is held down in whichever direction it has been selected. This can be pulsed in either direction controlled by the setting on the uh, rocker switch. Converting from manual to power feed takes literally just seconds by adding the timing belt and then tensioning the motor pulley. And we're off. That hand wheel spinning on the right is an indication of the uh, successful accomplishment of our primary objective here, uh, which was to avoid a whole lot of repetitive turning. Easier for the motor to do it than for me. So with proper operation confirmed, it was time to see if everything actually worked. This is a relatively long, thin aluminum bar, quarter inch in diameter and nine inches long. This is the sort of situation where a lot of turns of the hand wheel are often required. I normally use light depths of cut anyway, but particularly in a case like this, because of the long slender bar which was potentially susceptible to deflection from the tool, even though it was being held between centers, so several passes are often required. I'm using very conservative conditions here, uh, with a depth of cut of about 3,000. 1135 RPM and a driver motor setting of 80% or about 10 inches linear travel per minute. So I believe the feed rate was only about 0.0088 
one additional cut here at 10 thousandths and a three quarter inch brass bar. Overall, I think both additions went okay. The power feed actually worked better than I expected. If you have any thoughts on improvements or alternatives, or want any additional information, just drop a note in the comments. And thanks for watching.